Yeah, I, I saw you guys. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think I saw since I saw you guys when you came to the museum. Then I texted him. When was that? Was that December last year? It was like. It was winter. Wasn't it? Late fall. Because then he texted me, um, and I said I had seen you guys. But then I saw him somewhere. I've seen him since then. Is he coaching or is he attending? Doesn't do they coach? Five years and now he's just doing the juniors. Holly coaches too, doesn't she? Doesn't she? Yeah, she coaches basketball. Oh my gosh. She coaches basketball. Oh my gosh.
much time. So I'm so excited to be here, and I love the size of this room. I would say it's like a perfect um, size for a program like this. For those that don't know, my name is Amanda Bledsing, and I'm the Senior Living Communities Program Coordinator at the University of Iowa Stanley Museum of Art. I recognize a few of you from um, a tour we had in the fall, or a couple tours, I guess, we had in November. Uh, and today, I am going to do one of the first programs. I think I started doing this program when I started in this position five years ago, but I updated it even this morning, so it's always changing. Um, and it's on Grant Wood, and hopefully it does have objects in our collection and objects that aren't in our collection, but hopefully you learn something new about him um, along the way and see some, some new art that maybe you're not familiar with. Do we have anyone that, that really knows a lot about Grant Wood? Okay, good. Sometimes that's okay. We'll learn um, and discuss it together. I always like to thank uh, my funding, and right now my funding comes to the Community Foundation of Johnson County, the Saban and Potter Fund. And I have, I think, two or three quotes throughout this, just to get an idea of, I was surprised when putting this together of Grant Wood's sense of humor. He was quite a funny guy, like witty. Um, so here is one of the quotes I found. All the really good ideas I'd ever had came to me while I was milking a cow. Which I don't even milk a cow, but we get it, right? We understand what he means. Um, that calm. So to get started, Grant Wood was born on February 13, 1891 in Anamosa, Iowa, to Francis and Hattie Wood. This is a picture of him when he was, I believe, around nine or ten years old from the University of Iowa Libraries. Around this age is when his father passed away. He was ill um, for a little bit of time, and when he passed away, Hattie had you know, four kids that she had to think about what was in their best interest as well as hers. And so she decided to move to Cedar Rapids to be closer to her parents. Um, and this is the house she bought in 1902 for $2,580, I believe. Um, and then she started buying up houses around the neighborhood as well and would rent them out for income. So they moved to Cedar Rapids and Grant Wood attended uh, the old Polk School for elementary school. And it was in third or fourth grade when his teacher submitted some of his artwork to a national competition and he won. So early on, his teachers, his mother, um, family members really saw that he wasn't just interested in art, there might be something there. For high school, he went on to attend Washington High School, which is a different building than the Washington um, in Cedar Rapids now, but it was there that he continued in art. He was involved in yearbook and in the paper, um, theater backdrops, really anything they needed where painting was concerned specifically, he was involved. And it was there that he met his best friend, Marvin Cohn, who we'll look at in a little bit, but who also became a well-known artist and taught at Coe College for 40 years. If you're not familiar with his work, the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art has a gallery um, on display of his, as well as Coe College has a lot in their library and around campus. So the boys, beyond uh, creating art and doing things in school, would also hold security at the Carnegie uh, Library downtown at Bed Art Installations or things like that. They would spend the night with the art and guard it. So really, around the clock, that's what they were thinking of. Um, when it came time to graduate high school and go to college, Grant Wood moved to Minneapolis and attended, I always get the name wrong, so hold on. But it's now the Museum of, it is now the Minneapolis, it was the Minneapolis School of Handicraft, it's a very long name, Design, Handicraft, and Normal Art. It's now the Minneapolis School of Art and Design. And he was the only male enrolled at the time. Um, and from there, he moved to Chicago, where he attended school at the Art Institute, as well as working at a silversmith. So he started doing metal work as well. Now in 1916, he moved back to Cedar Rapids. His mom had hit some financial difficulty, had to sell her properties. So he moved back to help her and his sister, Nan, who you'll hear me talk about throughout this as well. He started building craftsman houses. So they, the three of them, moved into one of his craftsman houses, and they, he also started teaching at the local high schools in junior high. So here are two pieces of art that he would have created early on in his career around this time. And one of my favorites, both are at the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. But the left-hand side, this is a bench. Has anyone seen this before? Okay. 
we usually have it out at, and when I first put this together, I like just burst out laughing when I saw it at the museum. So this is a bench we created, carved with some of the students. Um, I believe at one of the junior highs, this little tag or label says that. Um, but what you might not be able to see is those are three crying students' heads at the top, and it says the way of the transgressor is hard. And this sat out, it's called the mortar's bench, and this sat outside the principal's office so that they really had to sit and mourn what they were doing or what they had done and given to the principal. Another cool piece around this time that he was commissioned to do, he started getting commissioned work in Iowa across the state, and this was on the west side of the state. A hotel, I believe in Sioux City, um, or Council Bluffs, they had in their dining room a corn cob room, or the whole room was painted like a yellow kernel, and then this hung above the dining room. So if you can imagine all of that, and again, it's metal, so just showing how vast, really, at a young age, um, he was as an artist between woodwork and metal work, and then, of course, painting. Here are two objects from the Stanley collection that you might not have seen. I wasn't as familiar with these. Um, they are oil on board. You'll see throughout this presentation that it'll say oil on board, oil on masonite, or wood panel, ups and board. Um, at the time, remember, he was building houses, so wood was readily available to him, and masonite, or some of the board, it might be like chipboard, and it was used as insulation for houses at the time. So easy for him to get, not a canvas. Um, these two probably don't look like the grand wood paintings that you do or are familiar with, much more impressionistic, which was very popular during this time in the 1920s in the United States. He did go to Europe four times from 1920 to 1928, and his first trip was also in 1920. He went to France and also Italy, and he would study with artists and network with other artists that were there um, living there or visiting from the United States as well, and then come back and create paintings and also teach his students what he had learned. Do these look familiar, or like other grammar pieces, or are these new? Yeah. I love the vibrant colors that he uses. Now, in 1924 or 25, he went back to Europe, and it was at that time, he also would go walking with Marvin Holm along with him during these um, trips to study as well. And it was during one of these trips, in 1924-25, that a gallery offered to have an exposition of his work. And so this is the poster of what that would have been, him along with another other group of artists. And then there is a picture of him around this time as well. Now, like any young artist around this time, he thought, this is it. I'm going to be famous. I never need to go back to Iowa. I'm not going to teach again. Um, unfortunately, it did not happen for him at this time, but as we know, it does happen. Here are two more pieces. So on the left, we have Grant Wood, a German village. Again, in that impressionistic, um, quick brush strokes, a little more pastels than maybe we're used to seeing from him. Um, this is called a German village. He painted this while he was spending time in Germany, which I'll get to in a little bit. And then on the right-hand side, this is a piece by his best friend, Marvin Cohn, called Lessons Barn. So Marvin Cohn was known for barn, his cloudscapes, kind of abstract clouds, ladders to the sky, um, so a little different than Grant Wood, although during this time, or this was 1939 and 1928, you can see the similarities uh, in the style and techniques. In 1924, the Turner family asked who Grant Wood they had underwritten and um, really helped him get commissioned work as well as underwriting his trips to Europe to study. They bought the building you see on the left-hand side and were turning it into a mortuary and asked him to not only do the interior design but create artwork for it and said that he could live in the space above the garage with his mother and his sister Nan. And so that is what they did. You can tour this location. Does anyone tour Five Turner Alley? It's a cool space to see and it does they have it set up similar to this photograph here um, behind the building. And you do, just to give you some bearings, you walk up some steep stairs, and this is actually the door to go upstairs, and there's a little bathroom on the left-hand side that Hattie had asked. She said she wanted, all she wanted was a bathtub. And the space is very small, and when you're there, the 
bathtub is very tiny. But in order to get the bathtub in, it actually is like sunk down three steps. It's very odd. Um, but she got her bathtub. And just to utilize the space correctly, uh, Grant Wood on this end of the room had two built uh, beds that came out of the wall and then a rolling um, kind of uh, storage area that he could put his paintings on to dry overnight um, and push them away so they could pull the beds down. And then during the day, he could use it as a studio. He was also teaching during this time, but it is 975 square feet for three people. I will point out this iron um, kind of half wall here that he designed. I'll show you a close up next. But just to show during this time, he also, you can really see how he utilized things around him. He was inspired not only by people around him, but by things around him. And they would show up in different ways. So on the left hand side is the ironwork that I just showed you, a close up of it. And that was an inspiration for a series of still lifes that he created. Here's one we have in the Stanley um, collection. The other ones that are in this collection actually have that print in the background. This one doesn't, but if you see it at another museum or gallery, um, a couple of them do have another, that print on the background. And he's not known for still lifes, impressionist still lifes like this. So this was one of a few that he This is another object of the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art, I thought, um, really shows his humor and his cleverness. This is the door to Five Turner Alley. And remember, it was behind a funeral home, or what was going to be a funeral home. So he took a casket and turned it into a door, and then painted on it. Grant Wood is returning to the studio. Grant Wood is in. Grant Wood is taking a bath, having a party, or out on the town. Now this piece in our collection is in the galleries right now, if you were go to go to the museum. It's called Blue House in Munich. Also done in 1928 while he was in Munich, Germany for three months, um, studying how to, and learning really, how to fabricate stained glass for the Veterans Memorial Wall in Cedar Rapids, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, this visit in his career, it was the last time he went to Europe. So his fourth time to Europe, uh, but to Germany, first time to Germany. And it really was such a pivotal turning point in his career. So for three months, he got to learn how to put together the stained glass piece he was working on, a very large stained glass piece, uh, and also focus on painting. But he was inspired. The artists there introduced him to the artists in their museums, which were very different than art he had ever seen. So even here, you see kind of that impressionistic style. We have the pop of the blue house, but still those quick brush strokes. Um, no facial really expressions or features on the people, um, which was common of his artwork up until then. But then he saw art like this by Hans Memling, Renaissance art, Gothic art in the museums, and he was blown away. And the, when he came back to the United States, his style completely changed and was what we or you probably um, know him for. So much more portraits with the long angled face, uh, no smile. He would often ask people sitting for him not to smile. Um, but what do you notice about these compared to the Grant Wood paintings we'll start to look at or that you know of? Uh, what's the difference between what you've seen so far and these paintings? The colors are different, right? They're darker, you have light and dark shading. Um, with so much emphasis, obviously, on the face, uh, but hopefully you can see those long faces um, and somber looks. On them. They, they look sad, melancholy almost, sometimes heavy, heaviness um, in their eyes. These, these two are, are more religious paintings, which Grant Wood did not do, but the style in general, um, hopefully you'll see going forward in his work. So first, this is the Veterans Memorial when window he was working on that brought him to Germany. This is 24 by 20 feet. Has anyone seen this in Cedar Rapids? I invite you to go to Nave Island and see it. It's right when you walk in, and you can almost miss it if you don't turn around like I did the first time I saw it. Um, but it is very large. This top part uh, with the woman here is 16 feet. 
just to give you an idea of how it's broken up. The bottom here has soldiers representing um, the different wars that had been fought up until then. And you can't see it, but there's a dark kind of spot in it. It's actually a wooden um, sign with an emblem honoring all the branches of the military up until that point. So the Coast Guard is the only one not included since it hadn't been founded yet. Now, if you put this together down the street, Mid-Island is in down. 